Hey guys, I am so excited to finally show you all what I've been working on over the last two years. So this is Dark Sky 4. It's a four voice analog polysynth and it features two low pass filters to allow you to add stereo modulation and movement to your sound. So let's get it hooked up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so for the purpose of this demo, I'm using my Arteria key step to control Dark Sky 4, but any MIDI controller or DAW would work. And because it is a stereo synthesizer, I have two quarter inch cables going out to my mixer, which are panned left and right. The first thing I want to talk about are these three top switches, which control how Dark Sky operates. So you have one voice, two voices, and four voices. And because this is set on mono, each one of these voices is getting played in unison, but you can switch to poly and play chords. Lastly, you have your three VCA modes. So it's currently on gate, so the note is either just on or off, but then you also have hold, which basically holds all the notes on. And lastly, you have envelope, which uses your ADSR envelope to control the VCA for each voice. And on this synth, the VCA section is staged before the filter section, so you can play 100% polyphonic since each voice has its own VCA. And lastly, you have your voice LED section, which basically gives you a visual representation of each of those VCAs. You have Portamento. As well as Detune. So each voice contains both a saw and square waveform, and you can adjust the amount of each of these waveforms in the mixer section. So here's 100% saw. percent square and obviously any combination in between the square waveform also has pulse width control Pulse width also has an elephone amount control, which will allow you to introduce pulse width modulation, which we'll talk about later. So after the VCA section, the signals get duplicated and are then sent to both filters A and B. Now when in A plus B mix mode, the signals will get combined again after the filters and fed into the main output as a mono signal. And when in stereo mode, each filter will go to the respective output, A or B. Lastly, you can then control the volume of each of these filters using these two controls. The LFO has two waveforms, square wave and sine wave. And the LFO rate ranges from 0.01 Hz, which is approximately a 10 second period, to 750 Hz, which is well in audio range. So let's route the LFO to the pulse width section by turning up the LFO amount. Now let's move to the frequency modulation section. This section allows you to add modulation to the pitch of the oscillators. You can also adjust the amount of LFO by use of the mod wheel. Frequency modulation also has envelope modulation, which is controlled by the ADSR envelope.
Filter modulation works the same way. You can introduce modulation sources by the LFO and envelope amount controls. So first let's add some LFO modulation to both filters. The filter section also features this control, which allows the user to invert the modulation signal to just filter A. By doing this, you can create a painting effect when in stereo mode. Next, let's try envelope modulation. Once again, if you switch to invert, you can then use the envelope modulation signal to create a stereo sweep effect. The patch bay allows the user to play Dark Sky 4 similar to a modular synthesizer. This is done by connecting separate sections of Dark Sky together with patch cables. Some of the inputs include pitch CV for each voice, filter CV for both filters, hard sync in for oscillators 3 and 4, and LFO sync in, which allows you to restart the LFO signal. The outputs are LFO out, envelope out, pitch CV out and square out for oscillator 1, and gate out. The patch bay also includes an attenuverter, which allows you to invert and attenuate the CV signals. And like all semi-modular synths, the patch bay allows you to expand Dark Sky 4 capabilities. When playing in mono mode, by default, all voices are in unison. However, by using the patch bay, you can create a sub-octave by routing a negative voltage to the respective pitch CV input. Another great way to use the patch bay is to synchronize the LFO with the sequence. You can do this by connecting the gate out to the LFO sync in. When playing a sequence, the gate out acts as a clock output. The shift button gives your users access to hidden settings. By holding the shift button and pressing a corresponding note, adjustments may be made to the operational behavior of Dark Sky 4. Shift A toggles between MIDI out mode and polychain. MIDI out mode just duplicates whatever MIDI the unit receives, and polychain allows you to expand to more voices by pairing the Dark Sky 4 up with another synth. Okay, I have polychain enabled on Dark Sky and I'm using my core Volca keys to add an additional three voices. I'm also routing the output of the keys back into the audio input so I can use the same filters. Shift B toggles between round robin and linear mode. So round robin mode works so a note is never repeated after it was released. 
This allows every note to decay properly prior to it getting reassigned. This is the default mode. Linear mode will recycle back through each note from the top down. This mode is great if you need more consistency and predictability per voice. Shift C enables calibration procedures. So calibration takes about five minutes and fully tunes each oscillator. Although dark sky is very stable, this may need to be done occasionally depending on the environment the device is being used. Shift D resets dark sky back to default settings. Shift E toggles between modes envelope reset and envelope normal. So envelope normal mode only triggers the modulation envelope on the first note press. Envelope reset changes this to every key press. Shift F toggles between detune and drift mode. Drift mode is a dynamic version of detune, which slowly tunes in and out. Shift G toggles between fixed gate and gate mode. Fixed gate is a static 5 volt signal assigned to gate out regardless if a note is being played or not. You can also adjust a handful of additional settings with SysX messages, such as MIDI channel in and out, velocity sensitivity, aftertouch sensitivity, detune sensitivity, pitch bend range, and others. Next, I want to talk about the back panel. So in order to power the unit, you will need a 12 volt DC power supply that is rated up to an amp. I'm not planning on including these with purchase, however these are really easy to get and you most likely already have one since a lot of synthesizers use the same adapters. I'll include specifics and some links in the description. So next we have fine tune, which allows you to tune the oscillators globally. We have firmware update, which allows you to update the firmware via USB cable. Audio in allows you to inject signals from other sources directly to the VCA mixer. We have MIDI out, and if you choose to use MIDI out, you'll need a TRS to MIDI adapter cable, and this is type A. We have MIDI in, which allows you to control the synthesizer, and our two outputs. And note, you can also use headphones with this output. So anyways, if you're interested in purchasing a Dark Sky, see the description for more information. If we are sold out or you're interested in purchasing one in the future, please let me know by either sending me a message or leaving a comment. And as always, I really appreciate your time and let me know if you guys have any questions. Thanks.